On today's It Is Written program, our friends from ADRA are here with a report on the Brazilian Water Project. It Is Written begins right now. It has stood the test of time. God's book, the Bible, still relevant in today's complex world. It is written, sharing messages of hope around the world. Ron and James from Adra Canada are back with us to give us a report on the Brazilian Water Project that you guys introduced last year. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. So how was it? How did uh, things go there in Brazil? Lots of water story. Now, what was the project exactly there? It's a very exciting project. I don't know about uh, most of the viewers, but when I thought of Brazil before, I would think of wet jungles. Um, but there are great areas of Brazil that are dry, semi-arid regions, and uh, people living there really struggle to have water all the year round for themselves, for washing, for their animals, uh, for their gardens, whatever. And this uh, excellent project was working with the local people and Canadian volunteers hmm. to uh, provide rain catchment or storage tanks, uh, cisterns, to ensure that they have clean potable water all the year round. And how many of these cisterns or tanks did you guys uh, build? The project was actually very successful. We were planning around uh, 60 and more than 70 were completed. Wow. Yeah. And, and with the capacity of these tanks was roughly? It oh, we're going to see it on a video right now, yes, right? Yes, you will see on the videos. But it varies from? Uh, 15,000 liters to all the way to 70, 80,000 liters, depending on what you want it for. This was a local technology. Yes, and uh, amazingly, uh, the villagers told us that the water stays sweet all the time in these tanks. It's rainwater, after all. Not like the local sources of water that they otherwise have, which is either very salty or uh, has lots of uh, uh, chemicals in that they don't appreciate. So. Well, that's terrific. Well, let's have a look at the, at the video report you guys have prepared, and I'm sure that will give all of our viewers uh, a better understanding of what happened there. For some, giving a financial gift is still not enough. They want to get more directly involved. They want to visit the countries that ADRA works in, meet the people, and get their hands dirty as they work side by side with them on a community project. For almost 20 years now, students of Canadian University College have been partnering with ADRA Canada, traveling the world, building schools, health clinics, and water systems. Their most recent project was in the arid section of northern Brazil, where they worked together with the local people to install water storage tanks, designed to collect and store rainwater for use during the long dry months when there is no rain. I heard about the trip to Brazil from a friend of mine um, who went last year and she was thinking about going again this year and she just encouraged me to look into it. I applied kind of on the spur of the moment to be honest. Ended up getting accepted and decided probably that was a good idea to go then. I heard about Brazil and I was like, oh, Brazil is a nice country, I should go. And then I went to the interview and I got chosen, so I'm here. I decided to come because I wanted to have the opportunity to help people in uh, who had less than I do, and um, also to experience another culture. Something that I've always thought about doing, because I do it, that's the kind of work that I'm interested in doing for a career, which is kind of what I'm studying. I just saw it as more of a chance to kind of make that next step towards finding out what exactly I do want to do. When you watch news on TV, you know, you see so many people suffering, you know, you see, you know, poverty, um, 
lack of food, lack of water, there's so many people suffering. When I say I can't just stay home and just say, oh, this is bad, somehow we need to fix this, you know, it's easy to say, but not many people actually take an action. So when I say I have to get out there, you know, help people, and yeah, this was just perfect um, opportunity. I found out about the trip at school. They had booths set up and I just wanted to have the experience and the opportunity to help people. You know, I've always wanted to go on a trip like this and see how uh, these kind of projects are run on the ground level because it's obviously more than just giving money to someone overseas and then something magically constructs. So, you know, just to see things, how they operate at, you know, the ground level up is really, really uh, kind of cool. And to be involved in that is even more special. I've always known about these trips and have lots of friends who have gone in the past. So just every every year they kind of have the time when people say sign up for missions or for the Adger trip, so I put my name down. Just interested in the aspect of traveling somewhere. Brazil sounded wonderful, and um, I was able and willing to go and see what I could help with. When these Canadian young people come here, they come here to help. But it's more than just Canadians helping Brazilians. It's a two-way street. In Adra, Canada, we talk a lot about the word partnership. And partnership is a word that's used by many non-government organizations to describe the relationships between people in the north and people in the south. When Canadian young people come to help in this village, they're giving a hand, but they're also coming to learn. Learn about life in a rural community in a developing world. Well, the people are amazing. They're always offering tea and biscuits, and they're really friendly and I guess it's right when people say that the poorest are the happiest because they're content with what they have. They're more relaxed than, than they are in Canada. That's what they are, to be honest. They tell us to slow down all the time. Here, take a break. You're being crazy. It's too hot outside to do this. So they bring us tea and stuff like that, try and get us to slow down a bit once in a while. Meeting the people of Brazil is amazing. They just are so warm and their body language and their, the look in their eyes when you even first meet them is it's unforgettable. The people of Brazil in the areas we've been working don't seem to have a lot. Um, they're very cheerful, wonderful people and seem satisfied with where they're at. The houses are very small yet tidy. They take a lot of pride in where they live. No one seems that we've encountered yet is wealthy. Yeah, these people, they practice subsistence farming. Donkeys, chickens, pigs. There's always goats, there's always donkeys, there are always large, large pigs. Their way of making money isn't similar to ours. They don't, I don't think they're, they try to make a profit whatsoever. They're not really making a business. They try to live. Their, their main goal is to survive. You look at back home and like all the, you know, whenever you look at the ground, there's this nice black topsoil. And here, everything just grows out of sand. You know, you can understand why people here struggle to kind of make a living and it's subsistence farming here just because that's really your only option. You can't do as much as you could back home because the land isn't nearly as fertile. Water is such an essential part of our life. When we in Canada turn a tap and get our water immediately, we forget that for many people in the world, getting water involves carrying a big container on the head and uh, walking a distance of one, two, maybe five kilometers to the nearest stream or well and then carrying that water back home. That means that Water just for cooking and for drinking and for bathing is at a premium. Most people pay far more of their daily income for water than we can ever imagine. And yet water has the difference between life and death, between health and sickness. Having a good supply of water means that the mother can cook adequate uh, nutritious meals, uh, that she can bathe her children, and that there's water for the activities around the home and especially to make sure that the garden is growing. When we look at the importance of water, we know that so many communities around the world have difficulty uh, obtaining good, clean water. Here in this rural area in central Brazil, the rains come some years, but not others. How then do families cope? One way that uh, they can live through the bad times is by having adequate water storage, making sure that they capture the rain when it comes and then having it for the gardens, for drinking, for cooking, uh, for bathing in the rest of the year. 
Our group has been part of an effort to build, I think it's about 70 cisterns in the area by Adra. We're surely finding that what people are drinking is not consumable, by my opinion, but of course they are drinking it regardless. So we've been building these cisterns. The way they're building them is they make plates and then they uh, make a base for the cistern. They set it all together and then they make cement to help mud the sides and then erect it. And then the rain water runs off of the roof into the cistern and that's how the people get their fresh water. I've mostly been doing digging in holes, you know, pickaxing rock and stuff like that and uh, mixing cement. At first it was digging holes. We've got these holes which is either clay or some kind of dirty sand. Um, at one point it was just rocks so we gave up and let the guys do that but uh, yeah so I can dig a hole now and um, then the fun comes when you get to backfill it back in so it's like Tuesday we'll dig the hole and Thursday we'll fill it right back in the same way um, and then in between we build cement plaques to actually form the cistern and then you gotta wait a few days for them to dry and in the meantime you sift sand and you sift sand and you sift sand and sometimes you get to sort rocks for some reason, my activities seem to involve a lot of the heavier work. They don't seem to have noticed my delicate side. So, for some reason, I have been the guy who gets to carry cement, get sand, dig holes, swing pickaxes, mix cement. I've been able to actually, a couple times I've been able to learn a couple things about actually building the cistern, some of the cement work itself, but most of the time it's grunt work. Here is a completed water storage tank. You can see the eaves troughs behind me from the roof with the uh, pipes leading uh, to the water storage tank itself. Thanks to your support of ADRA and the community spirit of the people here in this area and the participation of an eager group of Canadian young people, there are a lot of happy families now in this area in central Brazil. In a few months from now, I will be 80 years old. I have lived my whole life here in this part of Brazil. Before water tanks came to our community, we used to have to go about six kilometers to collect water. We would haul it home on the backs of donkeys. There have been many times throughout my life where we have had such severe drought that our animals have died because we did not have enough water to give them. During these times, it was very tough, even for us, to survive. Having these water tanks right by our homes has really changed our lives. The water that we used to collect from the lake was very salty. Sometimes it was hard for me to even eat my dinner because the water that we were using would make our food so salty. Now, the water we are using is clean rainwater, and because we have the tanks, we will always have enough, even through the dry months. Our animals no longer die and the health of our children has really improved. I don't understand why you have come, but I thank you very much. When you live in the desert, you soon realize that water is life. Accessible water has improved our village life. The water tanks have brought hope to our community. It was a total surprise for us to see these young people come from Canada to help us here. The tanks that they are building next to the school will not only be used by the students during the school year, but will also be used as a community tank in times of emergency. Now that we have tanks to store water, whenever there is an extended drought where even the water in the tanks dry up, the government can send trucks to fill our tanks with water from other parts of Brazil. We now feel water secure. It is very difficult to live here in this part of Brazil. It is hot most of the year and we do not have any machinery. It is all manual work. In December and January, we get rain. But then, for the next six months or so, we have no rain. The dry season is very long. The lake where we have been getting our water often dries up making it very difficult for us, especially our animals. The water that we get from the lake is very salty and causes stomach problems, headaches, and sickness. Now, with these tanks by our house, we will have water security year-round. 
Once the water starts to fill up our tank, we plan to just use it for drinking. For me, it was really great to have the students from Canada come to visit our community. They didn't come just to look and see our problems, they came to work and help make our lives better. Even in our wildest dreams, we never thought that people would come from so far away to help us. We are so grateful for the help. In the past, it has been very difficult to live in this part of Brazil because of the lack of water. Our closest source of water was about two kilometers from our house. During the rainy season, a lake forms nearby and our children would go with donkeys to collect the water. That water was very salty and quite dirty. Sometimes when the lake dried up, my children would have to go further to find water. Often they would have to miss school so that they could collect the water that we would need. We are very excited now because we have a lake, so to speak, right by our house. I am so grateful for what Adra has done. It has been a big dream of mine for many years to have a water tank right by our house. I have seen them in some of the other villages nearby, but I never thought that we would be able to have one in our favela because of the cost. I am so grateful to Adra for bringing water to our home. I can't tell you how much this means to me and the young people from Canada that came to help us build the tank. That was so wonderful. They are such good people. I never thought that anyone would come from so far away to help us. Since they moved on to help another community, our whole family misses them. I have lived my whole life here in this part of Brazil. It has not been easy. It takes a lot of hard work to make a living in the desert. The most difficult part is securing water. I have had 11 children and I can't even begin to count my grandchildren. I don't have enough fingers on my hands for that. While my life is full and I am very happy, we have spent our entire lives worrying about where to get water. Now that Adra and the young people from Canada have built a water tank right beside our homes, I feel like a worry has been lifted from my heart. I now feel safe and secure. I could not believe how hard the students from Canada worked. Even the girls were very dedicated. It was difficult to get them to even stop and drink a little tea. We are so very grateful to them for coming so far to help us have a healthier life. What does partnership mean? It involves coming to help your neighbor, even if your neighbor is halfway around the world. But it also means learning about the quality of life. We have so much to learn from people who have long known the importance of living and working together as a community, appreciating family, enjoying laughter, and the simple things in life. The people are really inviting. Uh, we work hard and they see that and so they just want to be able to give something back to us. You know, they're really, really glad to have us here. So, you know, these old ladies, they'll bring out tea for us and cookies and, you know, they just smile. And even though we can't communicate at the end of the day, uh, one of the most rewarding things is just the, the people's smiles and how we've, even without talking to them, have connected with them. I'm actually thankful for the language barrier. It's such a blessing just to have to depend on these facial expressions of exchange. That's our language, it's just facial expressions and embraces eventually once we get to know each other, but they're just so warm, their eyes are dynamic, they smile from like the whole world across. I think the best moment of this trip for me would just be the gratitude that people have expressed towards us. Uh, one guy described us as sons of God. He was just so grateful that we were giving him water. Just sitting out in the evenings out after we're done working for the day, we're done with all our responsibilities, and the kids would come and they would just play games, um, bring out the dominoes, and try to. It's always fun trying to play games like that with people you don't, you can't really communicate with with language, and it's just fun because it gives you a common bond. Kind, yeah, I'm super surprised how kind they are. Um, we are foreigners, you know, we kind of stand out in the, in the town, but they, you know, as soon as they see us, they come to us and then try to get to know, you know, get to know us. 
they want to know our names, where we're from, you know, even though we can't communicate, you know, effectively, you know, they still kind of want to play with us, you know, it's really, really good. I'll remember the people the most of anything here. Professor Paul Lehman and Professor Donnelly Lehman are from Canadian University College. They have been involved with ADRA Canada and CUC projects for a number of years. What are their thoughts on this partnership and the involvement of Canadian youth in projects overseas? ADRA Canada has been doing these projects in conjunction with um, Canadian University College for close to 20 years. In those years have probably gone to at least 15 different countries. I've been involved with the ADRA program that's involved with CUC for four projects. And the first project was to peruse the aspect of being able to recognize that the world is bigger than themselves, bigger than their own country. Uh, from a television perspective, the students tend to understand the world that they live in, but they do not understand the perspective until they are actually in a developing country seeing uh, kids living on the street, people taking batteries apart on the street to survive, uh, those things they don't understand until they see it, experience it, taste the food, smell the streets, uh, interact with the children, see the disease, uh, the underdevelopment. One of the things that we've noticed with students coming on projects like this is really no idea of what development is. What do you do in a country that needs some kind of work done for people that are disadvantaged? And the students, it's amazing what they gain from this. And starting to understand how simple it is to do something for a community uh, with such few tools and still be able to come up with something that works well and benefits the lifestyle of the people that we're working with. Why should we care about whether other people have a difficult life or not? Whether a poor farming community here in the central part of Brazil has enough water to drink? Canadians' values dictate that we do care about how other people are able to live. And we also understand more and more that we live in a global village. And when everyone's needs are met, then we all enjoy a better standard of living and a better quality of life. The people of this community are grateful for the support that has been given to them by CEDA, the Canadian International Development Agency, ADRA Canada and ADRA Brazil, representing the Adventist Development and Relief Agency, and Canadian University College, sending these young people here to make a difference and to learn about another culture. Here's the Executive Director of ADRA Canada, Ronald Kuhn, busy uh, helping with the water project He's showing us the way, so I guess I better get started as well. I think Adra's awesome. I have always kind of known about Adra, have a lot of family involved, and done the little door-to-door -door canvassing kind of thing for funds. But just seeing, like, actually in the field what Adra can do and how they're so well-received. Um, like, no strings attached. It's just people serving people. It's a life-changing thing. It's, we're changing individual lives. You look in someone's eyes and you can see that they've actually... It's a new, new thing for them. They've seen new people. They've understood that somebody from a different country actually cares for them. That's been the biggest thing I think that we've seen change in them and I think that will change us at the same time. It will help us to see like, that we can change lives even at home or wherever. We just need to find the need to take care of what needs to get. It's just an uh, amazing opportunity to expand your understanding of how things are in other places. Some people just need a little reality shake so it'd be good for them to jump out into the, the middle of nowhere and do a project like this so they under, actually understand people over here. It's very rewarding. I'm so glad I've come and I would recommend any of my friends to go as well. Another water storage tank is almost complete. On behalf of ADRA Canada, thank you CUC. Well, let me thank uh, Ron and James and ADRA Canada for being on the program, sharing that uh, report with us, and for the fine work that uh, you guys do. Now, I know you're always in the planning stage, always looking at new projects. Uh, where can folks go to, you know, stay informed as to what might be something that ADRA will be doing in the, in the near future? 
So please visit our website at uh, adra.ca and uh, we put on there not only the information about uh, our current projects but uh, anything that we have planned uh, coming up like uh, trips where volunteers can participate either with us or with our partners in the Canadian Food Grains Bank. Uh, we also work uh, closely with them. Uh, this is an opportunity to uh, be uh, to work with people from many different faiths uh, across Canada. Well, let's uh why don't we plan a project where It Is Written Canada and ADRA will go someplace and work together and, and do something. We're looking forward to that. Thank you. Well, thank you. And thank you to our viewers for faithfully tuning in each and every week. We truly appreciate that. Uh, remember our website, itiswrittencanada.ca. There you can send prayer requests. You can comment on what you have seen here. You can even make an online donation to the ministry. Well, our prayer is that the good Lord will give us the privilege of being back here again next week. But you know what? It won't be the same if you're not here. So why not make plans to join us? Until then, remember, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds.